Welcome to another Megasquirt Basics video. Today we're going to go over a simple little setting that can save you a couple miles per gallon. Now up on the top left here, you go to fuel settings and down to overrun fuel cut. So you might ask, what is overrun fuel cut? Well, a lot of modern vehicles use this feature to save fuel. So when you're in deceleration, coming down a hill or perhaps getting off the highway, going at higher speed, when you're completely off the gas, it just shuts fuel off to the entire engine. And so your engine is still revved, but it's just decelerating without any fuel. And so you don't use any fuel during deceleration. And it's essentially just like you're coasting and you have the car off. So over the course of a tank of fuel, this can save you a mile, or get a mile per gallon or two. In my personal car, I have seen it save one to two miles per gallon. It's obviously not worth a ton because it's only during deceleration times, but if you live in a very hilly area or you drive on the highway a lot, it actually is quite helpful. So let's go over real quick how to set this up. The very first thing you want to do is select it in the fuel settings, go to overrun fuel cut, and it will bring up this table. We need to activate it by clicking on this drop down and just turning it on. At this point, it will be filled with defaults, and we're gonna go over these defaults a little bit more. Um, let me just spread them out just a bit to make it a little easier. So, fuel cut, the very first thing you need to do is set an RPM that you want the fuel cut to activate at. And I typically do it at 1500 RPMs or higher, so that it really only happens in hard deceleration. The thing with overrun fuel cut is it is essentially shutting off the motor in a way and so it can feel very abrupt if it's in lower RPMs and comes back in lower RPMs. So you'll have to play around with this RPM and where you like it, but I would honestly say around 1800 to 2000 RPMs and, and this is depends on your situation, but around 2000, let's just say 1800 I think is where I've had pretty good luck with it. So that means that this feature won't happen if you're decelerating below 1800 RPM. So just little cruises around uh, neighborhoods and, and low speed, when you let off the gas, it will just idle like normal and it won't go into overrun fuel cut unless it's above that RPM. The next thing you need to do is set what KPA of deceleration you want this uh, feature to turn on it and typically it needs to be lower than idle and you can go data log where in your fuel map down here like in 30 or 40 where your deceleration is because typically your motor will rev up and then drop down and go into deceleration when it pulls a vacuum and so I usually find it in the 30s is pretty good so you could set it at 30 just wherever you're truly decelerating uh, like when you're getting off the highway and you've got it all the way lifted. Um, the other thing now we can set is the TPS limit. So you want this almost as low as possible within the reading of your your throttle pedal because you don't want it to come on unless you're truly all the way off the gas. Even if you're slightly on the gas, like 10%, and you're just pulling back slowly off the throttle, you will notice this kick on if it's if this is too high. Say, you know, if this was at like 20%, that would be way too high. And if anytime you're just still on the gas slightly, it wouldn't activate. So three to 5% is probably right where you wanna be. Make sure your throttle position sensor is calibrated over here. You wanna make sure that it's calibrated all the way because if it doesn't quite go to zero, you're gonna have problems and it won't activate. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Uh, coolant temperature, you can set it so that it only activates if your coolant temperature is higher than X amount. Uh, this is something you can just play around with. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much. If you set this really low, then it would, it would fuel cut it basically anytime you uh, are driving around on lower temperatures. Uh, doesn't make a huge difference, but a lot of the times they leave it at a higher, like 160 degrees or something like that, 
higher uh, temperature so that your motor can get up to operating temperature and be burning fuel until that point just to help it warm up. And typically also I like to keep it a little bit higher right around where my operating temperature starts. Uh, this is in Fahrenheit, sorry for all those that are in centigrade. But if you're say like 180, then when the car is operating, even without any gauges or having mega squirt open, you can feel when it goes into overrun fuel cut and or if you're watching your wideband O2 sensor, you'll see it just go to zero and you would know that the overrun fuel cut is activating. So this also just kind of tells you that your car is fully up to temperature. So even though you could te tem technically set it anywhere, honestly, I like to keep it at operating temperature so that I know my car is fully up to operating temperature. So 160 to 180 Fahrenheit, then if I, if I feel it kick in when I'm decelerating, I know that the car's warmed up and it's ready to go. I have a turbocharged car, so I like to know when it's fully up to operating temperature so I can decide whether or not I'm going to really get into it and uh, put it under a lot of load. That's just a side note. You can play around with that. I would just put it at around your uh, operating temperature. Now, after delay in seconds, this is how long uh, how long after you let off the throttle and it has reached all of these parameters, 1800 RPMs, cape, it's in deceleration at 30 kPa or lower, and the, the throttle position sensor is lower than 3%, and your coolant temperature is over 160 degrees Fahrenheit. At those, once these are met, how long will it wait? And typically you do want this to wait a couple of seconds and that will just keep it from being jerky. When you let off the throttle, if this was at like 0.5 seconds, like half a second, you'd feel it let off and then immediately almost go right into it and it, it slows the car down really hard. Especially if your car is set up for track use or performance and you like, you like cruising through canyons and things like that, this feature, you might just wanna turn it off at times if you're really gonna use it for like track or going through canyons on an awful lot because this this uh, delay, if it's too low, it will just make it feel jerky every time you're on and off the throttle. Uh, another way you can combat that is just to set it to really long, so three to five seconds. Uh, if you set it for five seconds, that would be really long. That would mean if you're going down like a really big hill and you let off, it would wait five seconds while these parameters are met before it goes into overrun fuel cut. So. If you do like to go on and off the throttle a lot, ripping through corners and, and, or, and or track use, just set this to a higher number, maybe three to five seconds. I have mine, I think, at three seconds, and it, it feels pretty normal, but five would probably be better if you're really using your car performance. And that's just my experience with it. I'm sure you might have your own experience, but you can play around with this. That's what's nice about it. You don't have to just take my word for it. Go in, mess around with this, try a couple different uh, delay settings and see what you like. Honestly, the entire process with this is somewhat tricky. And if you don't have it set up right for your particular combination, your engine, the weight of your vehicle, all that stuff takes into account how it decelerates and how hard it's going to feel when you go into overrun fuel cut, because it does kind of feel like you're hitting the brakes or shutting off the car. It's, it's a different feeling than you're used to if you're just if you've just driven a uh, a typical mega squared installation without this running. So go drive it around, get a feel for it. Um, but we can leave it at three seconds for now. The delay EGO after after fuel return. This is in seconds how long you wait once the overrun fuel cut has turned the engine back on before your EGO starts to go into effect. So EGO is basically your wideband sensor sending live loop feedback to your ECU to change fueling. And you don't want to give it a reading before the wideband has come back to where it's getting somewhat of a sensible reading, which could probably be anywhere from 300 milliseconds to a second. Um, so if you set that to a second or two, you'd probably be okay uh, if you have EGO running. And then the return fuel when RPM is less than, this is when you're 
for example, say you're getting off the highway, all of this is engaged over in fuel cuts going, what RPM, if you don't change your throttle position or change any of these other parameters, will it kick back on and go back to where it's just running the engine? And typically you just set this a few hundred RPMs below your greater to greater than RPM. So in this case, if you have it at 1800, you could probably set it at around 1400 and give that a try. Once again, these are all subject to how your combination is, what your driving style is. This feature is actually slightly tricky to set up, and that's why I wanted to make a video around it. It, I wouldn't say that it's difficult, but it's just specific to what your engine wants and how you drive. And really, you can just shut it off and not use it at all if you don't like it. It just is really just there to save fuel. The other thing I would say is if you have a really high performance like turbocharged engine, you know, making any decent amount of power, you also might not want this just uh, as a safety. It, it, you know, maybe you're making hundreds and hundreds of horsepower, 700 horsepower on boost, and you come off and you decelerate. You probably want extra fuel in there just to help cool things down as you're decelerating. So consider not running this unless you really want to or changing the parameters to where the delay is a lot longer so that you can keep fuel in the motor on a deceleration if you have a really high performance engine. So this is just there for those that want to get extra fuel economy, want to set it up and try it. Uh, I have found that there are different ways to get around it. Another way that you can do this if you have a turbocharged performance engine and you still want to be able to decelerate with some fuel is just keep your foot on the throttle slightly and that will keep this from triggering or you can just set your TPS lower than limit um, uh, a little bit higher so that uh, you can keep your foot on the throttle and uh, it'll keep it activated. So feel free to mess around with these settings. Uh, in my experience, you really can't hurt anything. You're just gonna find out what you like and try to make one change at a time when you go back and burn it and save it so that you know what has changed and what settings will affect what when you go to do it. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps you save a little bit of fuel in these times where gas is approaching uh, $5 a gallon or more. So hopefully this can help someone save a little bit of fuel. And if you like these videos, please consider joining my channel as a member and or subscribing for more content. Thanks again.